Let's talk about PayPal. PayPal more recently has been making some moves, the stock and the company. Now, if you want to know its performance year to date, it actually outperforms the S&P 500. In the last six months, it outperforms by quite a lot. But of course, in the last five years, it underperforms by quite a lot. The S&P 500 is up 90% in the last five years, whereas PayPal stock is down 34.4%. Now, of course, we know the reasons why, right? It had a huge, huge run up during the pandemic. The stock did well, very well, actually, and the business did well as well. After the pandemic, that's when things did not work out at all. Growth decelerated, mismanagement, business went down, the stock followed and quite a lot. Now, currently, it has a market cap of $73.12 billion. And despite the recent run up, we are still here at a forward PE of 15.9 times. Now, of course, this is not a stock that should be trading at a 30 PE or even higher, because if you look at the expected growth rates, this is not a stock that is expected to grow double digit sales year over year. No, it's around seven, eight percent or so. Bottom line is expected to grow a bit closer to 10% in fiscal year 25 and 2026. So you're paying around 13 point something times fiscal year 2026 PE right now. Now, of course, with the huge amount of buybacks, with some reacceleration in growth as well, new product launches, things could get back to maybe closer to 10% year-over-year growth for sales and EPS growing a bit more as well. And then you get a small re-rating. That can happen. Then you can maybe have a 20 time PE, right? So just the valuation, the premium that you're putting on the stock will make it go up. We've seen that with plenty of other companies as well, right? Once you have a clear sign of reacceleration of the business, the market suddenly puts a higher premium and so the stock goes up. Now, like I said, just because the stock has run up 20% or so in the last couple of months or so, does not make it super expensive. Because if we look at forward PE, EV to EBITDA, price to sales, price to free cash flow, price earnings to growth in the last three years or even the last five years, so we're taking a little bit before the pandemic as well. It is still much lower than its mean. Of course, you have that period here of the pandemic where valuations were extremely high. So let's put 10 year. So you get the 10 year mean. Even with the 10 year mean, we are much, much lower. And if we zoom in a little bit, if you look at price earnings to growth, despite the stock being up year to date, 16% or so, maybe a bit, a bit closer to 20 as we've seen, the price earnings to growth sits at 1.32, so lower than where it was at the end of July. Why is that? Well, the stock can go up, but if the business shows that, well, in the future, we're actually going to become more profitable, we're going to grow faster as well, then you're getting what you're seeing right here. And in my opinion, we're not done yet. This is just the start. The market is starting to realize that, oh, PayPal might not be a debt company after all. Full disclosure, of course, I own a position in PayPal, my cost average is below 60, so I'm quite happy with that. But am I thinking about selling even if it hits $80? No, far from it. 80, I'm saying $80 because that's the average analyst price target right now, as you can see right here, and that represents 12.3% upside from the price we're at today. Plenty of analysts are covering this company, 46 analysts covering, 21 has a hold rating, 18 buy and seven strong buy. Now, to those saying that PayPal is a dying business, the competition is eating its business, etc., etc., if that was the case, revenue would not have grown throughout all of these years. Yes, free cash flow has fluctuated a little bit, but now we're seeing a clear reacceleration in free cash flow. We're also looking at gross profit that has grown throughout the years. Again, we had that period where the business did not do well after the pandemic, but we're seeing it become better. Same with net income. So yeah, the competition has been here for quite a while and yet PayPal's business has grown. So they're definitely doing something right. Anyway, before continuing, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you have not, we really appreciate that. If you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comments with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So of course, let's start with the most recent news and that's PayPal expands strategic partnership with Adyen to offer fast lane in the United States. So they announced strengthening of their global strategic partnership with Adian, the global financial technology platform of choice for leading businesses. Within the expanded partnership, Adian will offer Fastlane by PayPal to accelerate guest checkout flows for its enterprise and marketplace customers in the US. 
with plans to extend this offering globally in the future. Now, Fastlane by PayPal, for those that don't know, is the new guest checkout experience that helps shoppers convert more than 80% of the time while reducing time to checkout by 32% compared to a traditional guest checkout. This was finally a very, very good move by PayPal because they were quite behind when it came to checkouts. Peter van der Does, the co-founder and co-CEO of Agents, said the expanded partnership with PayPal further strengthens Agents' ability to provide global enterprises with seamless payment flows and top quality guest shopping experiences. PayPal is a payment brand name that shoppers trust, and we're excited to take our collaboration another step further in the United States, utilizing our combined expertise to raise the bar for our customers. Now, this is not, by the way, this is not the first time that they're working together. Previously, Agent and PayPal have partnered for a number of years to allow Agent's customers to offer PayPal's best-in-class payment marks globally, including PayPal, Venmo, PayPal's Buy Now, Pay Later solutions. So, yeah, it's not the first time, but it's nice to see that now because PayPal, basically Braintree, is competing with the likes of Agent and Strike. It's nice to see that they can, despite being competitors, add another good option for agents customers. Now, how does that benefit both companies? Well, first up, for those of you that don't know, Adian, first half figures, second half figures. That's how they report their earnings throughout the year. Net revenue was 913.4 million euros, up 24% year over year. Process volume was 619.5 billion euros, up 45% over year. Point of sale volumes, 95.6 billion euros, making up 15% of total processed volume. Now, this is basically the pricing model for Adian. So no matter what they have, they charge a fixed processing fee of 11 cents in euros, plus then a fee determined by the payment method. So them adding Fastlane does not change much for Adian because they're still going to charge that 11 cents. But now they're adding a solution that if, if it truly is a great solution, if it truly brings in, shows up the numbers that PayPal have told us, then it brings value to agents' customers. Plus, this means more people using PayPal's products as well. So a win-win. We already have a positive note here from Mizuo with a price target on PayPal of $90. So Adian Plus Fastlane partnership helps PayPal unlock a $3 trillion e-commerce total addressable market. When we upgraded PayPal to outperform in May, our thesis was that PayPal can ultimately follow the Stripe playbook to unbundle payments from adjacent financial services like Fastlane and become processor agnostic. This could broaden Fastlane's total addressable market to around $3 trillion, which represents global e-commerce $6 trillion in 2023, excluding China and Amazon. In our view, today's news that Aiden will offer Fastlane for its enterprise and marketplace customers in the United States and plans to expand the offering globally has the following three implications. One, Fastlane product must be strong as evidenced by the willingness of Aiden, a direct competitor to Braintree, to partner with PayPal. I mean, it's, it probably is strong, but again, like, like I've just explained, I don't think there is like a disincentive, if that's even a word, for Aiden not to accept it. But okay. Number two, unbundling should drive wider adoption of Fastlane. We see potential for one to $1.5 billion transaction margin dollar lift, around 5 to 10% upside. And three, investors should start thinking about PayPal as a platform for all things payments versus myopic narrow view of just branded checkout. 100% agree on that. And by the way, for those that needed a small reminder, finally, last quarter, you see here transaction margin dollar went up quarter over quarter, still down year over year, but quarter over quarter, we went up from 45% to 45.8%. Again, small steps, but small steps in the right direction. As for total take rate, that is still coming down. Transaction take rate, same thing, but it's coming down a tiny bit. Lastly here, with regards to Fastlane, we've got a CEO of Radix saying here on LinkedIn that as a PayPal champion, I shared why Fastlane by PayPal is one of the best additions to make your checkout experience faster and frictionless for buyers. In simple terms, you enter your payment details once, then check out with one click wherever Fastlane is available. At Radix, we help PayPal merchants track, analyze, and grow revenue with our data analytics platform. Before coming to PayPal headquarters, I personally helped some of our customers integrate Fastlane, and after nine days, we saw a definite spike in sales from previous customers. More importantly, we saw a significant number of new buyers opting for Fastlane. 
My marketing team is preparing an awesome video to share my experience at PayPal Developer Day here in San Jose, California. Yes, they had their first, I believe, Developer Day was a big success according to Alex Chris. So more good news with regards to Fast. And again, it's all about making it much easier. Because how many times did you go on a website and then you, you click on PayPal, for example, and you're like, oh, username and password. Please check the app on your phone to verify that it's really you. Double check, triple check, and then you're like, you know what, screw this, I'm going to use another option. And so more recently, this process has become much easier. Way more people can now buy, done, over. Sales go through. I'm a happy person. The merchants are happy because finally more sales are coming through as well makes everybody's lives easier and great for PayPal's business. Last couple of things here, and this is with regards to the PayUSD, the stablecoin for PayPal. For PayPal right now, it is closing in at a billion dollar in market cap. And on the Solana network, this is from Roy, great find here, great account to follow on X as well. It is closing in to become the number two stablecoin going over Tether on the Solana blockchain. Now, some of you might say, okay, cool, but how are they going to monetize that? Well, it's about basically saving money in all the transactions that are happening in the PayPal ecosystem, payment rates, making it their own, saving money here, saving quite a lot of money if it actually works out and becomes bigger and bigger. Last thing here, and this is from Emir, links are down in the description and in the pinned comment, great account to follow on X on YouTube and on the internet as well. This was basically his couple of scenarios here. One, a no growth scenario, one where revenue grows 5% CAGR, one 10% and one 10% revenue CAGR growth and 20% margin scenario. You can pause the screen here and guess, guess what the price targets were. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Basically, you can copy this and make it your own, but I'll show you the price targets right now. So the no growth scenario means that the value per share for PayPal was $60. We're now a bit higher than that. 5% revenue CAGR means $86.5, higher than we are today. Then 10%, $124.3, much higher than we are today. Then if we've got 10% revenue CAGR and a 20% margin scenario, that's probably the best case scenario here, that sits at $154.5. And so right now, if we look at the stock, of course, you can see here four straight weeks of green candles. RSI is high, but not overbought. We're over the 200 day moving average, the 50, the 20 day one. So yeah, let's see what happens next with this stock. But the company right now is doing exactly what it should be doing. The market is now realizing bit by bit that PayPal is not a dying business. So no, I don't think it's too late to enter PayPal. Of course, this is not a business that is growing 20% year over year. No, far from it. It is buying back a lot of shares. So there is that. It is seeing some reacceleration in growth and future potential growth is there in my opinion. So yeah, I'm long PayPal. I'm very bullish on the business, very bullish on the new management team as well. Patience is needed with this one, but I do think that once things look even better, I think this thing can move up quite quicker. Of course, you can disagree with me. That's completely fine. Do share your thoughts down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.